flames Tidal waves Washing all the world away Today Everything we thought will change In this life We'll never be the same Hi everyone, Robbie here from Plant Based News. Um, we're really excited to introduce you to the director of an exciting new film, Dominion. Christoph Horst is the driving, um, driving force behind the film Lucian, which was an incredible film and inspired many, many people, including myself. So Chris, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Before we start and talk about the film, I really want to just go a little bit into your past and your connections with animals. Could you talk us through like your very first memory you have with an animal and that kind of emotional bond that you had with an animal? Um, I suppose that would have to be the cat that I that I grew up with um, for yeah most of my childhood. She was there. She'd sleep on my bed with me every night, and uh, yeah, really was very close to this cat um, who sadly passed away. 
and uh, honestly i'm probably still not over it um many years later um but yeah that would have to be the first one that comes to mind and what's your background with animals did you grow up on a farm or were you in the city how what was your relationship with them uh, I've just grew up in the suburbs, so I'd, I probably never met a farm animal until after I, uh, certainly after I went vegetarian. Um, I was vegetarian for nine years before I went vegan, and I think probably it was after I went vegan that I that I met a, a farm animal: sheep, pigs, cows, etc. Often, when we talk to non-vegans and we compare the lives of humans to the lives of animals, many people are outraged by the fact that we well through our kind of belief system we believe that animals and humans are equal that we're all earthlings that we're all of value because we live and and exist in this world together not you know for each other but with each other and often when people you know people ask why should you care more about animals and humans and in fact actually i care about all living beings humans being animals as well and people often forget that and i think What's quite interesting is that when you ask a person, why is a human being more imp important than an animal, an insect, a bird, you know, they, they sort of say things like, well, humans can write symphonies and humans can do and create paintings and, and build buildings. But they often forget about the incredible things that animals do in our world. And like take the bees, for example, if you removed all the bees and even all the insects on this planet, the biosphere would collapse. So really, who is the most important creature on this planet? <laughs> you know, it's certainly not the humans. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So why are you so passionate about animal rights? Like what you've, you've done a lot through your work and, and your, in your daily life, you're clearly a very passionate person. Like what drives you? I suppose what drives me is the things that I've seen and my knowledge of the scale and just horrific nature of these industries. I know what's happening day in, day out across this country and around the world. And seeing, you know, having having seen just levels of suffering that most people don't even don't even know exists or or don't want to know exists. Um, I think it's hard to to forget that. It's hard to not want to do everything you can to try and, and fix that. So you feel you feel compelled a sense of um, and a sense of urgency based on your personal experience. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I can, un I can understand that. With so much suffering and abuse in this world, you know, we as as you've said and witnessed yourself, how do we remain positive? How do we avoid becoming misanthropic and angry and introverted? Like, how do we keep moving forward? I I certainly have those days every now and then where I feel that way, but. Um, there's a lot to be positive for in this movement. Things are very different to how they were five years ago and definitely how they were 10 years ago. And I think five or 10 years from now, we'll be facing an entirely different landscape because things things are happening. Veganism is, is getting into the mainstream. More and more people are finding out about these industries and it's becoming easier for people to find out because these industries rely on secrecy. They rely on being hidden away. And those walls that they've put up are being broken down. And once that happens, it's it's inevitable that I think that those industries will crumble. So I'm I'm very optimistic, and that's what keeps me going, I suppose. That's great to hear. Um, now, this is a question about human beings, because obviously, you know, we're the driving force behind most of the suffering on this planet, if not all of it. Um, do you think that we are born with compassion built into us, or do you think it's something that we have to learn as children? I think I, I like to think that everyone starts out good, that there is good in everyone, and you know, there's that old saying I forget exactly, but you, you give a, a carrot and a rabbit to a baby, they're going to eat the the carrot and play with the rabbit, not the other way around. Um, it's it's we're taught the opposite. We're taught to to exploit and abuse those who we consider to be inferior that's not something that comes naturally to us it's it's essentially brainwashed into us from a very young age and reinforced again and again and again because that's the status quo that's how most people are and and, and a lot of people don't um haven't been made to challenge that idea we're conditioned aren't we almost sort of programmed in a way to unlearn our compassion like Especially yeah. young men, well, especially men in general. I think we live in this society with a kind of toxic masculinity that pervades every part of our world. 
which I think is responsible for many of the problems that we face today. And you know, there's a reason why 86% of vegans are women. Um, you know, I think men feel this sort of sense of, you know, if they stop eating meat or if they, you know, care about animals, then society is going to view them as less than men. Right. So let's talk about your amazing films. Um, first of all, Lucien, it, I, when I was creating our, our, our short documentary, Swine, I used it as a kind of like an inspiration to... Um, of the storytelling that you 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 employed and you know I take my hat off to you because it I think that film out of all the films I've ever seen was the one thing that completely like shook me from the inside out especially the one scene where you're walking down the long corridor and there's all the pigs in the dark and it seems to go on and on and on and it really epitomizes the kind of hell you know the kind of they, it's hard to put it into words, but that kind of like the helplessness and the hopelessness. Um, what was it like making that first film? Um, it was actually very useful for me personally. I think useful for my mental health in a way because I was getting all this material, seeing all these things. I needed an outlet for it. I needed something useful to put that towards so that it wasn't just going around in my head. It could be something tangible that could actually hopefully make a difference and, and try and alleviate some of that suffering. Um, so you know, people you know, often assume that, that it's a really difficult thing to, to sit there and put something like that together. But I, I kind of found the opposite in that I found it, um, yeah, relieving in a way to be able to um, put that towards good use and share and share it with the world and say, yeah, you know, I've witnessed this, witness it with me so that together we can, we can change it. Yeah, I'm absolutely. Sure, I'm sure a lot of people who've seen that film have, have been driven to, to stand up and do something. It certainly has driven me in my activism. <laughs> so thank you. It's great to hear. It's great to hear. Um, so the new film, I mean, how, talk us through the process of obviously you've, you've, you created your first film and then how did the, the idea for the second film come dominion and what, and obviously the name is very, very interesting. And obviously you've chosen that word, you've chosen that word specifically. Yeah. Um, uh, dominion is, is the film that I've wanted to make for maybe 10 years. Uh, I remember back in, uh, back in high school, um, thinking that this was something I wanted to do with my life. And at the time, I had no idea you know, what a bolt gun was, what um, controlled atmosphere killing is, or all these industry terms that I now, unfortunately, know very well, I'm quite familiar with. Um, but I just had in my head that I wanted to, to do something like this. And I, I'm not sure if I'd uh, actually seen Earthlings at the time, but certainly Earthlings was a, a powerful motivator um, because I showed it to friends of mine who said, oh, well, that, that doesn't happen here in Australia. That's just overseas um, or it's old footage or something like that. Um, so I um, became compelled to, to um, fight that myth that it doesn't happen here, that things are somehow better here. Um, and so I started that with Lucent, but Lucent was kind of, it had to happen in that I was getting all this footage specifically from pig farms and um, not so much from, from other types of animal abuse industries. So I felt like Lucent was something I kind of had to get done and get out of the way, um, and then I could start focusing on, on this uh, much more comprehensive view that not just looks at, doesn't just look at pig farms, but looks at our attitude towards animals in general. And, and so obviously Dominion as a word, do you want to just talk a bit about the the word dominion over animals as an idea um yeah i suppose the, the idea that it, it brings to my mind is um this feeling of superiority that that humans seem to feel they have and that it somehow grants them grants them dominion grants them a right to treat those who they perceive as inferior however they please to their own ends it's the same thing that, that allows racism. It's the same thing that allows sexism. It's people thinking that they're better for some arbitrary reason. So whether it's racism, sexism, or speciesism, um, I think it all kind of stems from this idea of, of treating inferior beings 
perceived inferior beings, um, however, however you like. And so that's a, a notion that I want, wanted to challenge. Do we have any right to have this dominion over animals? Um, no, I don't, I don't think that we do. I don't think that we are superior. Um, and even if we were in some arbitrary ways, that still doesn't give us, that still doesn't give us, us the right. Um, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Now, as far as like the film goes, I've, we put the trailer out onto our channel and uh, not on our YouTube yet, but we put it out onto Facebook. The article went up literally as soon as you dropped it. And we had, we've had like 15,000 shares of the article, you know, hundreds of comments, loads of people have written in, um, a couple, you know, there's been several people who said that they were vegetarian and it's making them think about going vegan after just seeing the trailer, which is quite something. Um, now, just obviously, the the trailer itself is it looks epic. Like there seems to be a lot of drone um, footage. How, with 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 technology, you think it, do you feel like it's really going to revolutionise the whole sort of vegan activism type film industry where we can get into unreachable places? What do you think about that? Absolutely. Um, not long ago, it just wasn't possible to see how we can now the scale of these industries to see these giant buildings, these giant identical buildings laid out in rows, um, just smacked in some, some beautiful countryside, just completely out of place. Um, it's just so valuable to be able to, to see the scale of it. Um, yeah, it just gives a whole new perspective. And, and the, in general, the, the improvements in technology over the last few years, you know, 4K quality, 4K resolution footage, um, we're able to see suffering in crystal clear quality, which isn't necessarily a good thing, but I think it, it removes any sort, any sense of doubt um, about the realism of, of what we're seeing. And I think being able to present something with, with good um, almost good cinematography uh, just is a, is a different way to to get people interested in it um, because so far a lot of the footage that's come out it's it's very raw it's very handheld shaky camera kind of uh, almost low quality so I think we're getting to a point where we can start showing with with crystal clarity um, exactly what's what's happening. Um, and remove any doubt. It puts people in the story. It puts people in the situation, and it's a it's a much more kind of visceral experience, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So, so making the film, let's talk about that. So, you go into places and see things that everyday people wouldn't see. Obviously, a lot of the process is um, top secret. You don't wouldn't want to reveal how things are exposed, but. I mean, have uh, what's took us through that experience? Have you, you personally, obviously, I assume you must have a team or you work with other people, but what's it like kind of going into these places and kind of trying to gather this content? Is it, you know, how do you feel emotionally? It's, it's a difficult question um, because when I started, I, I was very emotionally affected by it. Um, it was tough to see these things, but these days it's almost like I've got to see something completely, completely and utterly shocking to to feel anything at all. And it's when that happens, it's almost a relief because you know it tells you that you're you're still human, you still feel emotion. Um, and sometimes you you can sit there and watch hours and hours and hours of slaughterhouse footage and think I'm I'm, I'm not affected by this. What I'm seeing ob objectively, I know it's horrible. But I'm not, I'm not crying. I'm not. It's not keeping me up at night. Um, you, you do become numb to it, and I think when you, when you realise that, it's, yeah, it, it makes you question. Kind of what have you lost? What have you lost of yourself? And yeah, and I, I think it, it kind of, just, just numbs you. To all emotion, really. Mm -hmm. um, it's a bit like being in the in a, in, a, in a soldier, isn't it? Like going into a sort of battleground, and you have a job to do. And you know, in a way, and it sounds cold, but we can't sometimes afford the emotion uh, because 
as wonderful as, as it is to feel emotion and to be emotional beings, that the emotions can stop us from achieving our goals. And I feel, you know, Dr. Melanie Joy, um, are you familiar with her work? Yeah, I am. She, yep. she speaks of second degree trauma and that actually a lot of vegans or people who witness slaughterhouse footage and violence towards animals and other human beings um, slip into a state of second degree trauma where you become angry, misanthropic, introverted, kind of numb in many ways. And, and actually, it, you know, it's quite damaging to the human psyche. But when it comes to sort of vegan activism or filmmaking to sort of reveal these truths, I think it's not necessarily a bad thing to feel that numbness because it's a protective mechanism. I Absolutely. feel like if we as people exposed ourselves to this footage over and over and over again, and we experienced internally this turmoil on a daily basis i don't think there would be very many of us we would probably uh you know crumble on a regular basis so i think it's it's natural i think to have to disconnect right so um coming to the end now let's talk a little bit about grassroots activism how can we become better activists in your view um by doing i think just get out there um you know, start small if, if, if you're not confident about what you're able to do. Um, I think a, a really effective method of grassroots activism that I've been seeing, um, it's been over a year now, um, Anonymous for the Voiceless, um, the which is a group that started in Melbourne, yeah. the Cube of Truth, that's yeah, right, yeah. yeah, and it's now in, I think, over 150 cities around the world, um, and there's other um, p other organisations doing similar things, Um just getting out to the streets with the footage or whether you um, find you're able to actually have conversations with people stopping by who are interested. Mm -hmm. I think just, just putting yourself out there um, is a really, really important first step. Amazing. How can we encourage people to care about animals when there's a lot of people out there, many people who just don't care, who don't feel what we feel? I I I don't like to believe that that is the case that people don't care. I think that they just the right approach hasn't happened for them or they haven't they haven't been exposed to it enough. They've kind of learned to tune it out and and not really think about it and it may be one animal in particular that that gets to them or one story or just something and I think we just have to keep trying um, all sorts of different tactics because everything we do will reach a different type of person. And, um, yeah, I, I, I just like to believe in, in the inherent goodness of people. Um, I mean, sure, there are some who, who will never be on our side, but I think most people just haven't been really made to question it. And they've, they've put up all these barriers and it's our job to one by one break those barriers down. And lastly, um, how can people get in touch with you, support you? Um, if you want to just tell us your website and any of your social media where people can connect with you and also just mention um, when the film is going to be out too. Sure. So Dominion, the film is coming out in March 2018. It's just over, I think, seven months from now. Um, I've got a Facebook page, Aussie Farms, and a website, aussiefarms.org.au. Um so yeah, that's that's where all Dominion related info will be will be added. Amazing. Well, thank you so much. I really really appreciate the time you've taken to chat with us. I know everyone's going to be very excited to see this film and share it and and tell all their friends and family about it. The article, as I said earlier, has done really really well, and we've had so much amazing feedback just from the trailer. So we can't wait to see what you've uh, what you've created. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.